Sadish, Sadish is a programmer, software designer, entrepreneur, an open source advocate, an internet government specialist based out of Kerala, India. He's the co-founder of the India School of Internet Governance and was its coordinator for the first two editions, 2016 and 2017. He's also a board member in the Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance and the chair of All Seeds Group. He's also a founding, founding member of IGS Dynamic Coalition for Schools of Internet Governance. Satish Babu is also the chair of the Asia Pacific Regional at Large Organization, ABRAO, of ICANN, and the secretary of Internet Society Chapters Advisory Committee, Steering Committee of 2018. He was the president and fellow of the Computer Society of India and a member of the IEEE Apex Humanitarian Activities Committee. Um, and last but not least, we want to call Olivier Craig yeah. oh, yeah. Olivier. 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 And we all we, we have all heard of Olivier. Yeah. He was our yeah. first speaker. Yeah. We know him well yeah. throughout the event. So in the effort of uh, speeding up our agenda, uh, we just want to a, a hand for out. everyone. Oh, yeah. Let's give a warm welcome to our panel. Yeah, so you know, uh, what we're doing here is uh, we're talking about internet and I can and things like that, but the people that are here are people that are doing the same thing we're doing here in different parts of the world. There are different schools of internet governance in the South, India, Europe, Central North America, and then we have Anja that can tell us more about the IDF, so because all this is all related, so thank you. I will leave on. Oh, I don't stay here, so I can run the presentations when they tell me. I don't stay here. No, I can stay. You can stay moderate. I'm just going to assist from over here, okay? Okay, so, um, yes, I was supposed to, I wanted to make the introductions, but now they have already done it very well. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to ask each of the panelists to start presenting their initiatives for initial eight minutes. Uh, after that, I will try to write down some interesting questions and then have a second round uh, with one <coughs> question that I will ask uh, each, each one of you and then we will open for uh, questions that the audience might have. Um, let's start first with the uh, ladies and I believe, uh, alph strictly alphabetical, the order, Anya, please. <laughs> Thank you very much for, uh, first of all, very warm welcome, and it's a pleasure to be part of this school. Uh, I've been communicating with the organizers over the past couple of months, and I know that uh, they've established a very good process uh, for organizing something that we have today, and also for inviting the very respectful panelists. So it's really a pleasure to be part of this whole uh, uh, important event, and not just for you, but also for us, because we see it as, a, as an important capacity building uh, initiative that promises us in the future that we're going to have experts discussing the uh, internet governance in a, within a good process. Uh, as, as I said, I do have a couple of slides, so I'm going to ask for, um, for a help uh, to project those slides. Uh, so you heard at the very beginning that I work with the IGF Secretariat, which is a small, very small secretariat uh, established. Uh, thank you so much. It's already up. Uh, which is a very small secretariat established to um, uh, kind of do the administrative function primarily of the Internet Governance Forum. Um, I've been uh, told that uh, over the past two days we've been talking a lot about the IGF, especially about the historical view of it and the importance that it has today. So I'm going to skip that part and uh, we're going to focus primarily on uh, what is that completely <laughs> with the IGF today after 12 years of its existence that is important for you as the community and how you can engage uh, in the substantive topics and issues that are that are of your interest. So let me see what I have. Yes. Okay, so maybe to start from December 2017, from the 12th IGF, uh, that was hosted by the government of Switzerland in Geneva under the premises of the, of the United Nations, exactly where the Secretariat is based. Um, the meeting was um, pretty unique by its nature because it attracted uh, the, the record number of participants over the last uh, uh, 12 years that it was uh, hosted, but the process remained the same. And I think that's the biggest value of the IGF, especially when it comes to the community. You've heard a lot, especially from uh, Rico speaking previously about the importance of the multi-stakeholder model. 
and when you have an IGF as a forum established under the UN's umbrella, then, then something that's traditionally you would think of is obviously a multilateral approach. Uh, but the good thing is that the community really took care of the IGF to establish it as a multi-stakeholder forum uh, that in addition to one of very important principles that I think uh, maybe we didn't put the emphasis enough, especially not uh, during the sessions that I was listening, which I think makes the IGF um, quite a unique and kind of complement to the multi-stakeholder principle, uh, which is the bottom-up principle. That means that the community is actually the one that tells uh, to the stakeholders what is supposed to be on the discussion agenda. And uh, the IGF combines the multi-stakeholder and bottom-up approach uh, within uh, an open and inclusive process, which means that everyone can participate free of charge, of course, because the IGF was made by the community for the community, and it, it exists only because of the community. So that was the Geneva meeting uh, in that way organized. Uh, obviously, it had more than 2,000 participants uh, that, that gathered. Uh, you see who, who were the, the most participating countries from this region, particularly uh, a lot of stakeholders that are involved in the IGF, not just attending on site the annual meeting, but that they're actually involved in the whole process. And uh, that's something that I would like to speak uh, more about. What is that process? So uh, when, when you ask me how you can engage with the uh, IGF, before I start with the global IGF, so the IGF that is uh, uh, organized under the UN's umbrella, I actually would like to start from your own homes, uh, because I think that's the most important. Uh, there are around 100 countries and regions that are organizing their own IGFs in the same process as the IGF is doing it according to the Tunis agenda that gave it its mandate. That means that countries and regions have a multi-stakeholder co-organizing teams composed of three or four stakeholder groups depending on, uh, on the conditions that are made. Where you have civil society, governments, technical community, private sector that are participating. Uh, and organizing their own forums for their own communities, asking in a bottom-up manner their own communities what is relevant for them to discuss and to put on their own agenda. And uh, I work as a support to the National Regional IGF, so for me, basically every day is an IGF. And I uh, follow those agendas very carefully, and what you can see that in this, within the same process, for example, what you're listening in Sri Lanka and what you're listening in Brazil or in Argentina is completely different. And even if you speak about the same topic, for example, if you're addressing the gender, the approach to that is very different. The outcomes that you get from those discussions is usually different. That tells you that we at the IGF have a huge challenge, and that is how to make a comp comprehensive agenda of the topics and approaches that are and issues that are very different across countries and regions. And this is why we at the IGF find the existence of the NRIs uh, very important. So that would be the first step for the community that is willing to engage, to uh, maybe visit the IGF website or reach out to the IGF Secretariat and see whether there is an IGF process established within your country or maybe within your region and start from there. Engage with your stakeholders and see how you can, first of all, change the things within your country because that is a global change when we put it all together. Uh, the Tunis agenda, just very quickly, as I said, didn't call for the existence of the national and regional IGFs. Uh, today, yet we uh, speak about uh, about 100 countries that are officially recognized and that have their own IGFs. Just recently, uh, the IGF Secretariat conducted a formal recognition process for the Republic of Korea IGF. And uh, yesterday, before I started my travel here, uh, uh, we, we finished the recognition process for the Youth IGF of China, which was a two-month process, and I'm very uh, glad that we finalized it. So I think in September, they're going to have their own IGF. So in 2017, this is how we concluded the um, dedicated session to the National and Regional IGFs in Geneva. And IGF. This is the graph actually and the balance that exists among the regional and national IGFs and, and youth IGFs. Yeah, Three minutes. <laughs> we're kind of blocking you, aren't we? Yeah. 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 Are you so good? <laughs> 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 you Which might you prefer to what? Transparency in that boat. I can't see this. They're all looking straight through me. That's <laughs> something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. So, this is actually what you can see on the graph, just the balance that it shows, on, uh, that it indicates the number of countries and regions that are having them. Last year, as I said, my every day is an IGF. We had almost seven, 70 
uh, IGF events across the world happening. Uh, this map is always uh, very important for me because uh, when somebody complains, maybe you know, I do have an interest in internet governance, I do have my own interest in certain topics, but there's just no place where I should go and, um, and engage professionally uh, with stakeholders that are dealing with the same matters, then you know, this is my argument contra. Because when I show this map, you can see that there's a very good balance across countries and regions when it comes to body established practices. So if there is actually a will on your side, there's a way, according to this map, where you can uh, engage with those stakeholders and make a change from your own, for yourself, but also for the world. Uh, let me just quickly maybe stand here. Uh, aside of the MRIs, the IGF also offers a lot of opportunities to engage. There is something that we call the dynamic coalitions. Uh, I think uh, probably uh, Satish and maybe Olivia will speak about the uh, dynamic coalitions, so I won't take a lot of time. But I'm just going to say that the IGF Secretariat uh, recognized 17 dynamic coalitions. So let me put that in a simple language. What is that? If you are interested in a particular topic and you would like to engage with the stakeholders that share the same interest, then the IGF offers also that opportunity. So if, for example, the net neutrality or blockchain technologies or child online safety or my favorite dynamic coalition, climate change and internet, is of your interest and so on, then Everything that you need to do is actually visit the IGF the IGF's website. On the IGF website, you can see all the stakeholders that are involved uh, and, uh, and gathered around a particular topic. Click on one uh, link, send an email, and I think that those groups are very uh, welcoming to any new voices, and they will be happy to have you. It's also great for networking, because you're going to meet a lot of experts that already have uh, develop their expertise on the field, uh, and I think they will be very happy because we at the IGF are very hungry for new voices, new ideas, new perspectives, uh, and um, because that's that's something that's promising to make a change and uh, bring new energy in the whole work. Uh, beside the dynamic coalitions, there is something that we call the best practice forums. So the best practice forums uh, are also um, formations that are uh, focused on a particular topic that is being aimed by the multi-stakeholder community to uh, be explored and to produce actually a tangible outcome. Uh, so let me just give you an example. So last year, last year we uh, had three best practice forums that the multi-stakeholder advisory group and the United Nations Secretary General decided to <laughs> <laughs> one was focused on gender and access, another one was focused on local funding, and also we had a, a best practice forum dedicated to the cyber security. Uh, these are also very important activities within the IGF. They are led by the community for the community. So what's very important to say is that the methodology is actually that one. So the community gathers are, um, on virtual calls that are happening monthly, uh, sometimes even weekly, depending on, on the need. And, um, they discuss the topics, they bring the tangible, concrete, materialistic uh, contributions, and then we have the IGF Secretariat that acts as a kind of neutral entity and produces a synthesis document of everything that was received. And I think those best practice forums, if you look, if you go to the IGF website, if you look at the outcomes, you will also see that uh, the stakeholders from different countries and regions, different parts of the world, produced um, inputs that were different in nature. And that's why I find that we find a huge value in, uh, in those outcomes that are, that are produced. And uh, aside, beside of the best practice forums, there is a very important uh, project uh, that is happening uh, on the IGS level called the Connecting and Enabling the Next Billions. And as the name itself says, it's very much focused on the access, on the connectivity. Uh, this, is, this was, 2017 was its third year, third phase, that it exists, I'm done. <laughs> so I, I actually don't know whether it's going to be a fourth phase that uh, that will depend on the next decision. But in any case, my message to you is just that there is a lot of space to engage with all the, uh, all the activities. Finally, uh, I am I do have a couple of um, these four page info four page brochures from the IGF 2017 that I'm going to share with you so you can see maybe better uh, what I presented. Um, but also, this is actually something that all the countries and regions that run their IGF processes are doing together, collaboratively, so joint activities. We organize the main session for the IGF, a lot of work meetings on the side, 
Um, we produce a lot of um, publications that are of interest for the community. Maybe one thing to uh, mention, which is very important, is the toolkit for the NRIs, a, a set of guidelines how to establish the IGF process for your community. And that was the first document within the IGF that was translated in all six UN languages by the NRI community. So, so nobody was contacted. Thank you very much, Anya. Uh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry to, uh, to, to rush you. Uh, we still need to, need to accommodate the other panelists, but we will have a, a second round, a chance to expand a little bit more, and of course we want to have some, some interaction. So um, we'll stop here now, if you don't mind, uh, and we will continue with Olga, uh, asking everybody to stick first, please, to the eight minutes so that we can, uh, we, we can have the other panelists talking. If some of your panelists, uh, fellow panelists, steps down on the table, that means you have three minutes. If two of them are here, you have only one minute. If you have all of them here, you run out of time. No. This is happening accidentally. Olga, please. Thank you very much, Ali. Hola, gracias. Gracias por la invitación. Thank you for the kind invitation. And uh, congratulations for, for organizing this. I know how hard it is to do the first the first version of any project. So my, my congratulations for the organizers and best wishes for the future. Uh, one thing that was not mentioned is that I'm also a member of the Board of Trustees of ISO, and we have <coughs> Kathy Brown, our CEO here in the back then. fantastic photographer and friend, he's also a member of the Board of Trustees of ISO. So thank you for the invitation. I want to show you uh, one project that we started 10 years ago. I cannot believe that 10 years have gone so far. Um, what happened with us when we started to go to these meetings? Um, global meetings, ICANN meetings, IGF, no, not much of translation at that time. No remote participation, few transcribing, not easy, not easy to get engaged, not easy to understand. So we thought it was good to create a space where um, fellows could come first and get information, and not only information and knowledge about what was going on in these meetings, but also get a networking uh, in there among colleagues and also with the, with the experts, to have a chance to have a lunch with the experts or a coffee break. Uh, so you go to a meeting, you're not so lost. Uh, as I, I, I usually mention my experience in my first ICANN meeting in Sao Paulo in 2006. Uh, ICANN and Internet Governance was the subject of my PhD and the impact in Latin America. Although I studied a lot the structure of ICANN, I went to the first meeting and I swear I did not understand anything. I didn't know what people was doing, going back and forth, speaking in English in Sao Paulo. I said, what is this? How can I get engaged? But one thing really called my attention was the energy of the meeting. I said, I want to be part of this of this uh, community, but I need more information. Luckily, there were some colleagues that helped me, and then I had to navigate. And uh, no translation. Many people told me, but did you speak English? I said, yes. but. But it's not an, it's not the same. I mean, you have to you have to engage. It's more difficult. So this is why we have this idea of starting the school of internet governance of uh, South. We call it South because we started in in Argentina where I live. We started with with my colleague Adrian. So we co-founded this. Uh, this is a very dear picture to me. Uh, this is the version of 2016. Uh, Vince Surf was so kind to come and make the opening session in the first day. And uh, we had a, a nice group of people, and Glenn was so kind also to help us with the pictures. Uh, that's, uh, and also, uh, yes, <laughs> you were there, uh, my fellow. And um, so this, this is the evolution. As you see, the first one in Buenos Aires was smaller. It, it grew in, in number every year. This is more, it's not so in deep with like other schools. It's more an outreach effort come as many as we can hold. Usually we have like a, around 200 fellows. No payment, fellowship to everyone. And almost around half of them receive also hotel accommodation and meals. Depends on the, on the budget, we can, we can also, we usually have half of them with hotel and meals, and the rest can come to the program without paying. Nobody pays, that's the first rule. Second rule, half and half, women and men in the group. Not easy to do that with a panel. Panelists and experts, 
it's not, that, that gender balance is difficult to achieve, but half and half of the group has to be men and women. This is my rule. We still have a we have a challenge with that, but uh, we, we have to we have to speak about that. So you see the evolution of the groups. It has been growing around the we 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 organize it in, in different cities every year. That's extremely difficult, but it's okay. Uh, we, because we, we want to engage different communities in different countries. When we go to a country, experts of the country come to the meeting as experts, and then we, more people from that country comes, and then the other people from the region. We are not limited to um, only Latin Americans. We, you will see the list of, of countries participating. This is a very dear picture to me. It's been served, and, and my colleague Adrian, and it is in the, in the Organization of American States. And the picture behind me is my, our national hero, Jose de San Martin. It was very nice. We were waiting for him to go into the meeting, and he said he, he got into the meeting and in the room, and he said, "Who is Jose de San Martin?" I said, "It's our national hero." So it was very nice uh, moment and nice nice picture for me. This is the list of countries that have participated. As you can see. We, have, we are not limited to, our, to Latin America. We, we have participants from Asia, from, from Europe. There's no limit, limitation. We are more focused in talking about Latin American issues, but there is no limitation to that. And something important, from day zero, extremely complicated for the budget. We have simultaneous translation, English and Spanish, all the time. And when it was organized two times in Brazil, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. And now, if you go to YouTube channel of the school and Fundacion Chetulio Vargas, all the sessions are in YouTube Live in the three languages. So you can see all the sessions that you want there. And we had remote participation since 2012. And um, in the school in Washington, we had a record of 25,000 remote participants during the five days of activity from 89 countries. So that was really amazing. So many of our fellows are now engaged in, in different organizations. They are employees, of, well, and some of them are, have important roles, so we are very proud of that. And some countries, they started to have this area in the government or in the, the non-for-profit organization of caring about internet governance, which was a, a spin of our activity. This is the, the, the school in Washington that it had two, many participants, uh, 260, 25,000 participants remote. And this is the, the school last year in Fundacion Getulio Vargas in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. 200 uh, fellows and 110 experts. And, and we had translation in three languages and people from all the countries in, in the low and 52% of women uh, in, the, in the audience. Uh, and we also started other projects with, uh, because the community started to ask about a national initiative. We started Argentina, which is the Argentina's School of Internet Governance. That's the picture was organized in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Argentina in Buenos Aires. The plan is to rotate in the interior of Argentina in uh, every year. So we are working on that for this year. I hope we can organize it in my hometown in Mendoza, in the west of the country. And uh, we're working on that now. And uh, we always wanted to increase the, no the number of relevant participation of Latin Americanos in this process. And capacity building and fellowships to all of us, the, all the participants. This is the picture more uh, unstructured with Binserf and all the group in, in Washington. And this is the contact information. And thank you very much for your attention. Excellent. Thank you very much, Olga, and also thank you very much for taking the eight minutes. That was great. And uh, shall we continue now with uh, Oliver? Yeah. Olivia? Olivia? Yeah. Olivia? Yeah. Olivia? Yeah. I'm going to take the mic. <laughs> I'll take the mic so I can walk around. Uh, whilst this is being set up, I have to congratulate everyone in the room for your extreme self-organized coordination in, in the clothes you're wearing. Uh, because today, well, yesterday you were all wearing the Nasik shirt for the pictures and all that. The first day you came in as, uh, well, you didn't have the Nasik shirts. And then today, 
Nobody is wearing the Nazik shirt, apart from Glenn, of course, who hasn't, he's not quite in line with anyone else. But I can assure you, uh, be reassured, it's not the same shirt as yesterday. I made sure that every day I spilled coffee on him, and that shirt does not have any, any coffee on it. So it's a new shirt. He, he, he cheats. I put my twice. Anyway, so um, now that we've got silly stuff, um, I want to talk to you just quickly, briefly, about the uh, European Summer School on Internet Governance. It's actually got two S's because it takes place every summer usually at the end of July, and it's the first of all of the summer schools that, uh, well, all of the schools of internet governance that started uh, over in uh, 2007, which is quite a while ago. Um, it's a multidisciplinary uh, program with 40 hours, so it's like the whole week, basically. It takes place in a beautiful environment. In fact, if you look at the, the first page, you can see this, uh, this uh, evangelical academy, a uh, very old place in Meissen, where they make this porcelain uh, as well. Uh, lovely environment, uh, not many people in the town, and you can visit the town in about 15 minutes, so you have nothing else to do, you have to come back and learn about internet governance. And it's great because it's, it's interesting to have the sort of old thing, old atmosphere of having this academy of, well, it's, it's a Protestant evangelical academy, whilst at the same time you're discussing stuff which is really cut, cutting edge as far as internet governance is concerned. So you've got 40 hours uh, academic program, which includes also a lot of discussions that take place in the evenings over wine, over, yeah, it's, I've forgotten to say that, it's a wine producing uh, area, so lots of wine being, uh, being used. It usually is quite nice weather as well in the evening. And we cover pretty much everything, political, legal, economic, sociocultural and technical dimension of internet governance. Well, in 40 hours, there's plenty of time to discuss this. Now, uh, it started, as I said, in 2007. Uh, over the years, uh, we had 288 fellows in total. A few have come back uh, to actually become uh, uh, faculty later on, after a couple of years. Um, they come from 80 countries, so it's not only from within, uh, within Europe, and the age range has been from 20 to uh, 55. The geographical distribution, as I said, it's not all Europeans. Um, Courage. The majority is Europeans, but we've also had people from Latin America, North America, Asia Pacific, and Africa. And uh, the, the, the people that participate, um, there's been a balance between those that actually pay for their fees and so on, and those that are, um, that are there under a, a fellowship uh, with all expenses paid. And it's a good mix because you've got very driven people, and you also a very good diversity of, of uh, participants in this. Stakeholder group distribution has been very diverse as well. A lot of people from academia, which is great because a lot of people come and say, look, I want to teach internet governance, I'm interested in this, I'm researching in this, and then I want to go and spread the, world, the word uh, a little bit further in the world. Um, but we've got a good 12% from business, which is quite good, because I think internet governance often has this problem of not having enough people from the business sector, especially the IGF, for example, where we're kind of struggling to bring uh, people from businesses. The program in itself is actually very balanced, so we've got actually a whole, I think it's even more than a half day, which is just talking business issues as well as uh, just the societal and, and the other uh, aspects of internet governance. The gender balance has been uh, different year on year. Um, 2014 was a particularly great year for uh, women. Um, and, uh, but the other years now, it seems to have sort of settled quite well. 2009 was very male-influenced, I gather. Probably all these people smoking and drinking outside, and, you know, sort of until the early hours of the day. But no, it's been quite good, and um, it's, it's really refreshing, uh, because often you think, well, with women in tech and so on, and we've seen that yesterday, um, pretty much like here, there's a good balance of, uh, of, uh, of people. These are just a few pictures of what we do. So every night there is a, a, um, uh, an activity. Some of the activities are some of the fellows presenting projects uh, of what they do back home. Um, it's all self-selecting. So if you want to present a project, then you can. If you don't, then you don't need to. There are a few interesting little things to, to get people to talk to each other and meet each other. So one of them is a random selection of, of uh, people by putting them all in line. It's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So all the fives get together, all the ones get together, all the twos get together, and then they all have to introduce each other in front of everyone else. So um, it's quite fun. 
a lot of little games like that um, in the evenings, uh, and also uh, a lot of heavy work because the, the the lecturing and so on during the day. We just have a few breaks. Um, usually by the end of the second day, people just come out of there and go, "Oh my God, my head is exploding." By the fourth day, they're like, "I'm starting to make sense of this." By the fifth or the the last day, they say, "I don't ever want to leave this place. This is so cool. I want to you know continue and learn more." And people not only uh, learn a lot of things in there but they also uh, build friendships and uh, a network for life. And it's great to see participants in this summer school uh, later on at different meetings uh, when they already know a number of people around them and uh, they've all had this common program uh, with each other. I'm not saying it's the only way to do it, but this is one of the ways and it's worked pretty well. Uh, and we're now in the 11th year. It's actually gonna be the 12th year um, next year. And that's it. Uh, to apply, eurosic.eu. Right over here, you might not be able to read it. EU, of course, is the European Union, and coming from Britain, I couldn't quite possibly agree to this. But still, it's your EU because it's in Germany. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Olivier. And now, uh, Satish, uh, please. Uh, thank you very much. I'm Satish, and I'm from India. Uh, I've been here for now four, four days. The first day, this room was kind of empty with only the the best there, and it is my uh, privilege to have been helping the team here to uh, set up everything. That's so, true. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, interestingly, the India School of Internet Governance has a fourth sort of connection, which I'll touch upon shortly. I represent two schools. One is India School, which started in 2016. The other is the Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance which is a kind of uh, apex uh, regional kind of a thing, uh, training trainers for national schools. Uh, now, Asia Pacific is a very diverse region, and uh, I'll come to this picture shortly. Uh, and there are many challenges in promoting internet governance, in participating in meeting meetings. There are multiple languages, there are cultural inhibitors, uh, and many more things, which I don't want to get into right now. So the, uh, these, both these schools were started in 2016 with the objective of uh, propelling people, pushing them into participating effectively. Uh, we also, of course, have this, uh, you know, uh, time zone issue. <coughs> there are 10 time zones in Asia Pacific itself. So even for the Asia Pacific uh, uh, regional meetings, we have a problem. Uh, to come to the first school, which is India School, uh, 2016, uh, I am actually a fellow of uh, Olivia School. That's 2012. It's, it's not my school. I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what anyway, is present here. <laughs> yes, Wolfgang School. So after 2012, when I participated there, I met an interesting person called uh, Rinalia, who of course later on became an ICANN board member. And uh, with her support, I got myself into ICANN, and then my story starts there. Uh, but in 2016, we were convinced that we need a school in India. The problem was that it was very difficult to get speakers, and it's very expensive, and we didn't have much of a budget. We said, okay, if you have an ICANN meeting in India, it would be very useful to get uh, the speakers. But there was no ICANN meeting scheduled for India at that time. It, uh, it so happened that 2016 October meeting was in Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. And Puerto Rico had the Zika virus coming. So all of a sudden, the Puerto Rico meeting got pushed to Hyderabad in India. And that was our break. We went to the government of India and said, we want to do the school because ICANN is coming here. We got all the speakers coming here. And we organized our school just the previous three days to the ICANN meeting. And obviously we put, pulled in all people, for example, Glenn and Olivier, Renata. We had a bunch of speakers uh, from the ICANN group speaking at our school. Because we just grabbed that opportunity. So you can see some pictures here. Uh, uh, sorry, so uh, we had participants from Afghanistan, the whole region actually. Because they were all, uh, many of them were fellows for the ICANN meeting itself. And they said we also want to participate in the school. So it was a good break for us. Next. Uh, some of the panels. Next. Uh, this was the uh, group for the second school, 2017. Uh, next. So this is the first school. <coughs> uh, among people that uh, we refer to here, there is, this is what? Pointer? No. Okay, the pointer was the pointer. The laser pointer? Yes. Yeah. So I just want to mention that. Uh, this person here is an ex-ambassador of UK to the UN. Since someone is asking for the diplomatic you know, interface with internet governance, so we had Nick Thorne, 
who spoke on diplomacy and internet governance. Uh, Sebastian was there in both the schools. Next. <coughs> so we had some interactive act, uh, activities and you know uh, uh, some fun times. And uh, people generally tended. Uh, we have most of the people who are uh, young people. There were a few people who were retired also in this group, but generally the, the spirit was very kind of uplifting. Next presentations on uh, various aspects. This is on the dark web. Next. Uh, this is on cryptocurrencies. Next. Uh, some of the uh, quotes, uh, the philosophy of some of these aspects. This is from IETF. Uh, very significant in the context of cryptocurrencies. Next. Uh, all the lectures uh, on, in the school were uh, are actually on YouTube currently. Uh, and uh, you know, it's, it's only one language. So we have multiple languages, but our link language in India is English. So uh, for us, there's no translation required because all of us speak English. So, uh, and one thing about a uh, lot of tweets, about 1,300 tweets uh, in the uh, both the schools. Uh, this uh, the India school is a community uh, effort, community-driven school uh, by eyes of chapters. The first school was two chapters. The second school is three chapters. This uh, the next year and the year after there will be four chapters coming together uh, to organize the school. I think that's a very interesting model that the community in the form of eyes of chapters are actually driving this. I'd also like to briefly mention Asia Pacific School. This is a trainer's training school, uh, usually held in Bangkok. Uh, it is, the, the original person who pushed for this was Professor Chon, uh, Kilnan Chon, who is from Korea, uh, who is on the uh, ISOC uh, uh, Hall of Fame, a uh, very senior person. So he saw a room for you know, Asia Pacific. Uh, also for the IGF, uh, uh, the, uh, the AP SIG's main thrust is participating in IGF. Because the APC thinks that IGF is a right forum for projecting uh, the internet governance issues as a very broad, uh, uh, open kind of, uh, uh, although it's non-binding, it is still an important uh, kind of a place. And uh, many of us are involved, including myself. Uh, Anya mentioned dynamic coalition. I'm a member, member of three dynamic coalitions. I find it very useful. But one thing you didn't mention is probably the day zero events. You know, on the day zero, we have an opportunity to make uh, or you know, organize our own events. So APC. Last Geneva meeting, we organized a day zero meeting where we had a what what we call as all sick, all the original sick got together. All the was also there in that meeting, uh, uh, and it was a very useful forum to come together. So Sandra, all we have not mentioned that Sandra has been in, uh, uh, has actually pushed for the formation of a dynamic coalition for the schools of internet governance. It is formally formed in the last Geneva meeting of IGF. And we hope that that will be a forum where we can uh, all the schools, including the North American school, can discuss on common aspects, things like curriculum and quality control and teaching and material sharing and a bunch of other things. I'll stop here. Thank you very much. Atish, thank you very much. And, and with this, we conclude the first round of presentations. And I have some questions for you. Maybe you can please uh, join the... So I'm going to start in the same order of the, of the presentation, so I'm going to start with Anya. Um, so one, one of the things that I for, forgot to say in, in my previous presentation is that one of the outcomes of these discussions of internal governance during the WISIS mod uh, was precisely um, an evolution. I mean, it started with a working group where we had the principles, but institutionally, what happened was the working group on internet governance who later became the, 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 the IGF. So this is the you know consensus institution for internet governance and globally. And I wanted to ask uh, Anya. Um, so you 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 mentioned that there are different levels of. Um, so you have the global level in the IGF, you have regional IGFs, and you also mentioned the national IGFs initiative. Uh, how, how do you think they are interacting now? Do you think there's a good communication between them? Do you think it's helpful for people to engage first on national level and then try to do regional, global? What are your views on this? Well, thank you. I mean, for the past three years that I've been working with the NRIs, I would say that there is a very good communication between the IGF as a community on a global level, and uh, the NRI, so the National IGFs and Regional IGFs. There is no reporting mechanism. I think that's very important to underline here, just because somebody covers the global 
scope doesn't mean that it's more important than somebody covering the local scope or regional scope. But uh, we do collaborate and we do feed in uh, into each other processes and I think that's very important. Uh, the regional IGFs, especially the coordinators, will uh, tell you that they do, do have a good communication with the national IGFs keeping their independency and autonomy. That will be the same set from the side of the global IGF, especially from the UN side, which I think is a very important message to send. Uh, but uh, as I said, just monthly we organize uh, the meetings where there's a very good outreach, uh, there's a good presence of the national and regional IGFs, and I think that tells us uh, uh, primarily how good interest there is among countries and regions uh, to work together because they see it as a key of uh, making personal co comprehensive <coughs> agenda. Uh, but also um, just uh, you know, brainstorming and, and trying to uh, think of proposals and suggestions that are effective for everyone, just for those that have access to these kinds of events, which is still a privilege for them. Thank you very much, Anya. And um, Olga, um, there was a, a very interesting slide that I saw from Olivier's uh, presentation that I would like to learn more from the Latin America experience and also from the Asia experience. So, Maybe the same question for Satish. Uh, it's regarding the composition of the stakeholder groups in schools. Um, so this is the first part of the question. If you can share with us the composition of stakeholders in the South School of Internet Governance. And also, have you been tracking more or less what's been happening with the students? How, how much can, has this been helpful in helping them participate uh, more in the Thank you, Rodrigo. When I saw the slide from earlier, yeah, I thought that it was a good comment to add. How you can get engaged with our school, just also our website, which is governanceinternet.org, and, and you fill a form. Well, this year, we received 850 applications for the school that will take place by the end of April, uh, again, in the Organization of American States. This year, was focused on cybersecurity, freedom of expression, and <laughs> privacy. The process of selecting the fellows is quite complex because we try to build the group as much diverse as possible. Half women, half men, but they have to be really multi-stakeholders. So we, we have some statistics I didn't show, but we want some people from government, private, uh, private sector, uh, NGOs. So we, we try to build it as much as diverse from geographic perspective as many countries as, as possible. We usually get a lot of applications from Argentina, Colombia, Mexico, those and Brazil. Those are the ones sending hundreds of applications. But if we have one from Nicaragua or <coughs> one from El Salvador, we try to bring them with hotel and accommodation so they can participate. And also if we have several, like we select five, ten from one country, they have to be from different stakeholder groups. That's a lot of work. But we think it's the essence of the spirit of the school. And uh, so if you go to our website, you can just apply and see all the previous schools and all the presentations and all the links to the online um, <coughs> uh, sessions. And you asked me something more that I forgot. So that, that's about the composition yeah. of, the, of the students. But uh, <coughs> have, have you been tracking on some, I mean, some somehow uh, where the, the, the students uh, go after school and how, how useful is the school for them to engage in? The well, the, as I, I, I briefly mentioned, it, it is interesting, several spin-offs from the school that you just don't expect. In some countries, a new area devoted to internet governance starts in the government first. <coughs> because the government sees all the engagement of the community, of the academic in, in, the, in, the, in the local uh, uh, city, and then they start a new area. Some universities have started programs devoted to uh, internet governance. Many of the students have really got engaged and some of them are working for internet society, some of them are working for ICANN, some have started uh, personal projects, so NGOs or personal projects related with internet governance. We have uh, several groups in social networks it is quite difficult to have them all together, and uh, we are, they are like uh, 2,000 plus, uh, the, the ones face to face, and, and many others uh, remote. So uh, it, it has a, a personal impact and a, a community impact. And as I said, changing from one country to the other, it's a fresh start every year, because you have to find a location, you have to find where to eat, the social activities, and, and we, we usually get together for dinner and for coffee, and 
So that takes a lot of time. But at the same time, it, it creates an impact in the region that I think it has been very good for the community. Thank you, Olga. And since this is the same question for Satish, do you mind if we skip him just for this, Oliver? And you will be the last. Because right. I have a different question for you. <laughs> Yeah, so let me share a very interesting development uh, that came out of the India School uh, last year, 2017. India, with its 1.3 billion people, has no national IGF. Uh, uh, so many of us are very concerned about it, and we were wondering why. So they turn, turned out that there was a history, and the government did not want to touch it for various historical reasons. Uh, after the school, or during the school, there was a discussion as to why there was no IGF in India. And the immediate outcome of that was the young people in the group said, we want to have a youth ID. <coughs> and I wrote to Anya, before I had met her, a couple of months back, saying that we need to start this. And she was very supportive. And this actually came out of the school. So as a result of this process, we're going to have a, a youth IGF to begin as a thin end or the wedge to begin this whole process. Uh, and even if the government is not going to cooperate, we will still have it because I was told that only three at least three uh, constituencies are required. So we, we do have three apart from the government. We are hoping to have the government also involved. So this is actually an immediate outcome of the school. It is not the learning alone that matters, but also the dynamics of this group. You have a bunch of uh, very active uh, people uh, who are alumni of the school. And these people can actually start changing things. The status quo can be challenged. So which we feel, the right, we feel is the right outcome that uh, we should expect. And not just the fact that people learn from the school. You know, to come to the constituencies, we do have a fair representation of civil society, academia, uh, and the government, but not so much of business. So business, for various reasons, is staying out. Uh, we, we, will, we, are, we are trying to attract them, but it might take some time. Thank you, Satish. Yeah, business sounds like a challenge to, to engage in it. And uh, last but not least, uh, Olivier, I have uh, this question for you. So the, the European School, I believe, was the first initiative of, of school uh, in internet governance. Um, and after all these years now, you see that there are many emerging, right? Uh, of course, we are in one uh, new uh, initiatives. How, do, do you have a, a platform or do you have a way of communicating amongst the different uh, uh, initiatives. How how you plan now to link uh, this uh, new initiative massively to this uh, say, worldwide initiatives of schools? Yeah, thanks very much, Rodrigo. So, uh, first on the the I've seen that each school is actually very different. Um, some travel from country to country. Uh, some are always based in the same country. Of course, the Indian School of Internet Governance would remain in India. Um, and the one like uh, the Euro SIG remains in Meissen and is of course space limited to the number of spaces in the academy. So um, as far as the future of Euro SIG is concerned, it would be very difficult for me to say we're going to double the size of it or triple it because we don't have enough room in the academy to get people to, uh, to be there. And I think that we found a good, um, a good balance in Euro SIG to have um, nearly as many faculty members as uh, fellows that come and, and spend the whole week there. Now, when it comes down to the, uh, the fellows after they leave, uh, definitely there is a, a high component part of networking and of keeping in touch with each other. And we found that um, with today's tools, such as uh, various social networking sites, etc., it is possible for people to keep in touch with each other. It might be even more interesting to perhaps have common projects or common um, discussion mailing lists perhaps, or pages on whatever your social networking sites are. I don't want to say Facebook and LinkedIn. Did I say that? Okay. Instagram. Um, who else pays me? Uh, Google. Um, anyway, none of them pay me. So that's free publicity. No, but use, use social networking to be able to really build a network of fellows that have attended these schools. And I think that from what Satish was saying, you know, some people have attended one school, but then they might wish to even uh, attend another one in another, another part of the world, um, because you do get, because of the differences in, in, in the way that they do things. Okay, a lot of the introductory, uh, introductory courses might be very sort of a, a rehash, if you want, of what they've already had or, or what you've already heard. But um, it's important to continue growing and certainly build that network. One of the common things between all of these schools is that they, uh, 
they have people participating in the faculty side of things that are actually in those current internet governance processes that are taking place out there. The issues are getting more and more complex. There's more and more of them. There's a need for more people to be involved. And not only that, as time goes, we're all getting older. And at some point, we're going to say, you know what, we need younger people to take part in this because it, it's, we're not building our network at that point, or our future. Our future is behind us. It's the next generation that needs to build their future as well. So um, as, as much as we can network with each other and pass on that knowledge that we have from our experience into the younger, younger people getting into the, uh, the system, use any tool, any platform, any way possible. And again, this is all bottom up, this is all the internet, so maybe it's not for us to say how to do it. Maybe it's for everyone else who is involved here to, uh, to make up their mind. And, and you have to be a self-starter in this environment, so I would just say be a self-starter and, and organize a network for yourselves. Thank you, Olivier. And we have uh, 20 minutes for questions from the students. So. So, buenas tardes. Uh, so, I went to to the school to to the southern school in Costa Rica uh, with Olga, uh, and uh, so I can say that definitely one of the outcomes of me being there. I went there as a you know from the government perspective as a as a speaker, but but but, but in many ways. NASIC would not be possible, I mean, would not have happened if, if I hadn't had a brush with that. So there's a lot of cross-pollination. I mean, I mean, one of the obvious obvious outcomes of this is that it happens when you learn about it. And it's a cross-pollination, it has different characteristics depending on where, where it takes place, but, but uh, in many ways, schools of internet governance are a lot more interesting and fun than, than you know, than, uh, and more, uh, you know, more di different topics than going to the meeting itself, the ICANN meeting. The ICANN meeting is actual work, <laughs> you know. So, so, so this is this is this is great. As I walk towards uh, Glenn, uh, I am also a fellow from the uh, 2016 uh, school, the South School of Internet Governance in Washington D.C. Great, thank you. I just want to share with you, I, um, I, how many have I been to? I've been to two or three with, with uh, your 